Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I want to make a video ranking all the legendary bounties in the game from the easiest to hardest. All legendary bounties are out now. There were 10 in total. Some were pretty easy, some were average, and some were pretty challenging and difficult. And on this scale, I will be using green for the easiest missions, white for an average difficulty, and red for the hardest missions. And I will be basing it on how hard it is on solo. So solo, how hard it is, also trying to take the target alive, and just how many times you can possibly fail in the mission, how ridiculous the mission is. So let's start off with this video. And also, this is my opinion on these targets and how I feel about them. You might think some targets that I say are easy might be hard, or you might feel that some targets I say are hard are easy. But this is just my personal experience. I've done these targets multiple times. We're also going to be looking at them on five star difficulty. That's what we're going to be using to measure them on how hard they are in five star difficulty. Now, let's get started with the video. Starting off at number 10 with the easiest bounty in the game, in my opinion, is Etta Doyle. And the reason that I think she is so easy is because she actually comes to you in a trap. All you gotta basically do is just wait around this area, hide here, and she and her gang will appear. You wait for a few minutes, and it'll actually tell you which one is her, and then if you wait even longer, she will actually get scared, she will realize that it's a trap, and then she will start running. And the moment that she starts running, you can actually tackle her, you can tie her up, and then her gang will actually be so determined to get out of the area that they won't even notice that you are actually tying her up and then you can just leave the area and you don't have to worry about her gang shooting at you. I don't know if this is a glitch or something but when she starts running away you just tackle her, tie her up and just get out of the area and the gang doesn't even go after you. It's really easy. Next we have the Wolfman and this is another pretty easy bounty and the Wolfman can spawn in one of three locations. He can spawn on a campfire on a hill, he can spawn near a destroyed cabin, or he could spawn in front of a cave like in this case being chased by a bear. If he is being chased by the bear, make sure you shoot and kill the bear as the bear can kill him when you're trying to bring him in alive. That can really mess you up there. But after you kill the bear, all you pretty much gotta do is just tie him up, lasso him, and he doesn't have any kind of gang with him. But Right after you actually lasso and tie him up, you will actually have a pack of wolves that will go after you. Just shoot and kill all the wolves, and then all you basically do is just put him on the back of your horse, and you take him to either Coulter, or you can take him down the hill right here and deliver him. But just be careful, because another bear might spawn along the way, but there's not really any, any enemy shooting at you in this mission, so it's actually pretty easy. Number 8 is Philip Carlier. You're here. <laughs> you're here. Oh, thank heavens you're here. See, I've been here for, must be years, trapped. See, I, I thought no one would ever come. Philip Carlier, the Castile Cotton Company chief clerk. But uh, I'm sure you already know that, given why you're here. My, my, can't imagine how it must look. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no time for any of that. Now, if you'll just let me... Oh, I was so hoping for someone to share this with. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh. Mm. <laughs> Comes on rather strong the first time, does it not? <laughs> Now this guy, I would say, is the last guy in the easy category. Now, when you first meet him, he knocks you out with some kind of herbs that he froze into the soup there. And when you actually wake up, you're hallucinating all these large animals, just ignore them. They're no threat to you. But he actually comes right at you, and he will actually start spawning in random directions. I recommend being in an open area, probably near the water, because then he can only spawn in certain locations. And all you basically gotta do is shoot him. And even though he is a hallucination here, if he actually stabs you, you will die, even though it is a hallucination. Right after that, if you kill the hallucination enough times, you will actually break out of this, you will actually start seeing normally again, and then you have to look for him. And he can spawn on a series of islands right here in the bayou, and when you actually go after him, there's not too many enemies in this area. There's some enemies that can fire bow and arrows at you, but they're not really much of a threat. But what is annoying is at the end of the mission, when you actually tie him up, there is actually a ton of alligators. A lot of alligators will actually spawn, and they can actually come from very different directions and they will actually charge at you they'll run straight at you and the second they grab you you die instantly and then you gotta start all over again at the end of the hallucination and you gotta keep doing it so when you tie him up everything is pretty easy until the point when you tie him up just watch out for all the alligators go to some kind of open area and just shoot all of them with a rifle and then all you gotta do after that is just deliver him and you're done number seven and the first in the average category is yukon nick 
Usually marshals, dogs, who fight my bears. Ah, shit, I know you. I make a special case. We'll be fine. But first, we drink. Come on. Not. Yukon Nick is the first in the average category, and he is actually the last legendary bounty that was added. And for being the last legendary bounty, I actually expected it to be more challenging. Now, don't get me wrong, he's harder than, you know, like, Edda Doyle and, like, you know, the Wolfman that we've shown before, but I was expecting more of a challenge. And basically what I did in this mission was I killed this one lookout here quietly and then you can actually snipe the bear cages and when you snipe one of the bear cages the bear will actually get loose and start attacking all of his guys. And at this point all you basically do is take cover right here, shoot all of his guys, kill all of them, the bear will actually die pretty quickly. After that, there is actually this animation that plays when Yukon Nick takes the Marshal hostage. If you want to try to save the Marshal, you don't have to, but if you want to try to save the Marshal, start shooting him around the shoulder area here. He will drop the Marshal. After that, just tie him up, and the moment that you actually tie him up, and you try to put him on your horse, there will actually be a ton of enemies start spawning. But you can actually avoid them. You can actually shoot the barricade, just what I did. I shot the second barricade, let the enemies deal with the bear, put him on the back of my horse, and just rode away from the area and just delivered him. It wasn't really that challenging, but it's not an extremely easy one either. At number six, and next in the average category, is Sergio Vincenza. We'll be shackled at all cost. That is how government works. I used to use this rifle to fight for them, but now it is turned the other way. Whatever happens, we must be strong, amigo. Sergio Vincenza and his team of snipers can be a little bit annoying because there's multiple targets that you have to either kill or bring in when you're doing it on 5 star difficulty. Fortunately though, all the snipers are around this tower here in Roanoke Ridge so you don't gotta go looking for them. And I've actually figured out a pretty easy way to do this. When I did this back on my guide, what I basically did was I just charged right in. I charged right in with a semi-auto shotgun, shot the guy at the base of the tower, killed one of the snipers, went up on the second portion of the tower, second floor level, shot the next sniper, killed him here, and then I actually moved up to the top and I just tackled Sergio Vincenza. And the other targets, my friends were clearing them out in between here, but basically all you would need to do is after you tie up Sergio Vincenza, I suggest you just sit in this tower, sit in this tower, clear out all the enemies. If you're trying to take them alive, make sure to use eagle eye vision because it will point out exactly which enemies are bounty targets. There's a lot of explosives that you could also shoot to kill a bunch of enemies, but after you do that, all you pretty much do is just put them in the back of a bounty wagon and just deliver them. You have a few enemies chasing you, but not much more than that. The worst part of this mission is the beginning, trying to avoid the snipers, but other than that, it's not that bad. Next at number 5, and these are the last in the average category, we have the Owl Hoot family. Now a few people might be saying, the Owl Hoots, they're hard, they're not average. Now I'm not saying these guys are easy either, but I think that there's much harder bounties than them. I'm going to explain those a little bit later coming up. But the Owl Hoots are the hardest in the average category, that's why I have them last in the average category. But basically, with these guys, there's just so many of them, and they're spread across. Some targets can be pretty easy, like this guy underneath the bridge but others could be at a camp surrounded by a lot of enemies, another one could be at Fort Mercer, and you gotta collect all of them all around the map and just take them back here and deliver them. But what throws a lot of people off, and this has actually gotten a few people killed, is when you actually deliver all the targets, when you deliver them here, you will actually have an ambush spawn. And I believe the ambush starts spawning on four star difficulty and then on five star difficulty always spawns. So right after you deliver the entire family, you have to fight off all of these enemies. But after that, it's pretty much over. But this mission, it can get a little complicated because there's just so many targets and they're so spread apart. At number four, and this is the first in the hard category, we have Cecil C. Tucker. Oh man, where do I start with this guy? When I did this on five star difficulty, I died so many times. I restarted the mission so many times trying to figure out a strategy for this guy. Now basically what happens is you go to this fort right here, north of Saint Denis, you kill a few Lemoyne Raiders. And then after you kill them, Cecil C. Tucker will actually spawn, but before he spawns, there will be so many waves of Lemoyne Raiders coming at you. And when they come in, they will actually throw Molotovs also all around the place. And the best place to hide, in my opinion, would actually be one of the towers I hid in this tower right here. Take cover and just shoot the targets. The targets do not appear on your map, most targets at least, just like in most 
five-star missions. So you got to figure out where the shots are coming from. You peek out for a few seconds, you get shot up a bunch of times, you're guaranteed to use a bunch of tonics in this mission. And once you kill all the enemies, Cecil C. Tucker will spawn and he will actually throw a Molotov. And there's a really annoying glitch in this mission where he can actually burn himself to death. So he can accidentally kill himself with the Molotov and this can really annoy people if they're trying to bring him in alive. But after that, you kill all the targets, you go up to Cecil C. Tucker, you tackle him. I personally recommend taking him to San Denis instead of Ansberg, because if you take him to Ansberg, you're going to encounter more enemies along the way. When you take him to Saint Denis, you're still going to have a few enemies chasing you, but it's not as much as if you take him to Ansberg, in my opinion. Next at number three, we have Red Ben Clemson. And the reason that this guy is so difficult, if you bring this guy in dead, it's not that hard. But if you try to bring him in alive, you have to bring him in alive and two of his guys. And what makes this mission really annoying is that when the train is moving, you're actually going to have enemies that are also chasing you. The train is pretty easy to find, and some people, what they do is they stop the train, but that makes it actually harder because then all the enemies chasing the train surround it. Eventually, enemies chasing the train, they do stop spawning, but you have to deal with the enemies chasing you, shooting you from behind as you move up car to car, and also clear out the enemies on the train. And you want to be very careful because you don't want to shoot any of the targets. You could accidentally shoot them. When you get close enough, it will mark them. That is, if you're trying to take them alive, it gets really complicated here. And what gets really complicated is there's one car where there's actually two targets in it. There's Red Ben Clemson and one of his guys, and they are both bounty targets. And if you're trying to tie both of them up, you're going to get shot by the other one. I actually ran in and I knocked one out really quick. And then the other one, I actually tied up. That's how I did it. But this mission was just such a pain because the enemies that are just shooting you, chasing you by horseback, going after the train, and then the fact that you have to move up train car to train car, avoiding hitting the bounty targets. If you're trying to take them alive and then got to get these two guys in this one car, this mission can be pretty challenging. Number two is Barbella Alcazar, and for being the first legendary bounty added to the game, she's actually extremely difficult, and I actually consider her the second hardest legendary bounty to get on 5-star difficulty. And what makes her so challenging is that you have to get her and two of her associates as well, either dead or alive, but if you're trying to take them alive, it's extremely challenging because oftentimes one target will actually run away when you're in the middle of a gun battle. The enemies, they don't appear on the map, and there's a lot of them all over the place. There's actually snipers with Carcano rifles that will actually pick you off at a huge distance and if that one target runs away It automatically fails even if you get the other two targets and she can sometimes climb up in this tower up here And it's really annoying to get up here You get up here and she will shoot you a bunch of times and then if you're trying to take her alive It's really annoying to get her down plus you have to go through all the enemies fighting them here I actually ended up stealth killing a lot of the enemies here early on because I just didn't want to deal with them This bounty is extremely difficult on five stars are difficulty to do it solo. Very, very difficult. It's not impossible to do solo, but it's very, very difficult to do solo. You almost always need a bounty wagon. You're pretty much not going to be able to do it any other way, getting all those targets. And the fact that you have to deal with all these snipers and just climb up in the tower, she's not always in the tower to be fair, but sometimes when she's up here, it's really annoying to get her down because you miss when you throw her down. You could accidentally throw her all the way down and then she'll die and you can't bring her in, in alive at that point. And number one, the number one hardest bounty in the game, in my opinion, and also the worst bounty, I can't stand this bounty, is Tobin Winfield. I'm here. I'm here. You got me. I come willingly, but uh, please hear me out. I'm in danger. Not from you fine people. Rather some cutthroats. I was quite unwise to trust. I promised them the deeds that I uh, misappropriated if they would help me flee. Now I have it on good authority that they mean to kill me for those deeds. Protect me and they're yours. I'll give it all back. Yes? Good. Good. Follow me. They will be here very soon. Now I know what some of you guys are thinking. What could be so bad about this mission? All you gotta do is follow the guy as he shows you where the deeds are, right? Wrong. 
This mission is an absolute nightmare. I can't stand this this bounty. And out of all of the bounties that I did, this one gave me the most amount of problems doing it solo. Now, if you do this with a team, it's not that bad. But if you do this solo, it is almost impossible. And what makes this mission so bad is you have to follow Tobin here to the Deeds, and he can take two different routes. In this case, he's taken this route south of Thieves Landing, and there's actually three ambushes in this mission. Three ambushes. The first ambush is pretty easy to get rid of. You can just run up and kill them before Tobin even gets towards them. The second ambush is the worst. There's going to be so many enemies coming towards you on horseback. And they come from all random directions. They don't appear on the map. They take so many bullets. You got to shoot them in the head. That is pretty much the best way to kill them is you got to shoot them in the head. And you're going to be using up so many tonics in this mission, and you are guaranteed to die a bunch. But the worst part about this mission isn't even the amount of enemies. It's the fact that where the mission takes you, you have almost no cover. There is almost no cover in the area where you have to defend Tobin, and Tobin almost has no cover as well. And not only will the enemy shoot at you, but they will shoot at Tobin. And the second that they kill him, the mission automatically fails. It automatically fails, and you gotta start all the way to Thieves Landing again, and you gotta hear him talk about how he's gonna be cast into oblivion. And if I hear him say he's gonna be cast into oblivion one more time, I am gonna go crazy. It was only a matter of time before they got bored, exhausted my funds, and decided to consign me to oblivion. This mission is, drove me mad. This mission was absolutely awful. I mean, look at this. Look at what you have to deal with in this mission. It's absolutely awful and then by some chance if you do happen to clear out all the enemies on the second ambush he gets ambushed a third time later in the mission and then that third ambush isn't as bad as the second ambush but it's still pretty bad once you kill all the enemies there you finally get the deeds and then he actually agrees to follow you but if you don't tie him up and he just follows you, he will actually betray you halfway to the destination, and he'll start running away, and then you actually get chased by even more guys. And even if you tie him up, and you start trying to get back to the sheriff, you get chased by even more enemies. This mission is absolutely awful and a nightmare. I actually had to get a group of my friends to help me with this mission, because I was just struggling so much with this mission. If you don't believe me that this mission is actually that bad, Try to do this mission solo on 5 star difficulty, you will see just how ridiculous this mission is. It is so annoying, you are going to waste so many tonics, and just using up that many tonics in this mission isn't even worth it, and it's a, a giant waste. No cover whatsoever in this mission, so many enemies coming from all directions, ridiculous objectives, he dies so easily, and the second he dies, it fails, and you gotta keep restarting. Oh man, this mission was really, really bad. It was the one bounty that I really, really hated. I actually liked pretty much all the bounties in the game, even the really hard ones, but this one, I just did not like. It just made me so frustrated. But that is that for this list, guys. Let me know what you think of my list. Is there any other bounty that you think is the hardest one in the game? Let me know down below, and if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like. If you're new to my channel, enjoy my content, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.